What is going on guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be breaking down why you guys should be picking Support Tusk in your lobbies. Now one of the reasons why you should be picking this hero is because this hero does super super well, especially in the position 4. I've seen a lot of pro players playing this hero in the position 5. I definitely don't think that works in pubs, especially especially the lower MMR you guys go. It's definitely not going to work as well unless you're just a Tusk specialist and you definitely understand your lane pairing. But other than that, you should be playing Tusk specifically in position 4. You can can definitely play a mid and offlane i just think position four is currently one of his best positions and mid i don't think he's a great offlaner he's just not tanky enough and while yes he can build blade mail and heart and be definitely very very tanky it's not going to be as tanky as let's say a centaur or a slarder or a bristleback it's definitely not going to be very very good for you you can definitely get a lot of value from this hero just from the support line and one of the key features on why you will be picking tusk is to rotate off cooldown this hero does not hit creeps even when he's a mid laner he doesn't do very well at hitting creeps so you need to make sure you're super super active around the map and looking for kills constantly if you guys are playing with an offlaner like bristleback or one of these highly sustainable offlaners that don't need you to be in lane soaking xp all the time make rotations as soon as you guys have level two or even level three if you guys don't feel confident enough and your lanes aren't going too well then definitely make the rotations you're going to be doing a lot of work with this hero and another reason why you should be picking this hero he's especially good up against heroes like nature's prophet crystal maiden grim stroke and silencer Nature's Prophet is super, super popular in the current meta, and he's definitely very good up against them because you can just snowball out of his Sprout, and it's always going to be very nice. You could also get an ally out of Sprout, and that's going to work in the late game because people tend to get rid of Quelling Blade mid to late game, so they definitely don't want to have it unless they are a melee carry and they want to upgrade to Battle Fury. Then sure, they will definitely keep it and they don't need your help that much, but you can set up so much. Snowball is one of the most versatile spells in your kit, and you are always able to get so much value between Snowball, Tag Team, and Ice Shard a well-placed ice shards can definitely be the difference of guaranteeing a kill and actually griefing your team and that is one of the reasons why i think tusk's win rate is so low other than the fact that there's so many tanky heroes in the meta that he's just not able to blow up quickly especially being played core because your typical builds on tusk are going to be tranquil boots solar crust into blink and then aghanim scepter this is your typical support build, obviously adding one and other little small items you guys want to get, maybe a falcon blade, maybe a soul ring. It definitely depends on how you guys want to build them, but that is more or less the standard. But if you want to be playing this very, very greedy support and your team will actually allow you to do that, you can always go for the one punch build, which is always going to be very nice. And that's with the phase boots, the solar cross, the desolator. But typically my biggest recommendation on playing support Tusk is always going to be able to buy the blink tiger and the Aghanim scepter. That is going to make you a really good Tusk player is when you know how to actually kick people and where to kick them it's actually one of the hardest things to learn on tusk that's why core tusk is a lot easier than support tusk just because blink dagger aghanim scepter is a very nice combination but it's very hard to pull off when you're a newer tusk player so i definitely don't recommend this type of build if you're a newer tusk player and you're just getting into this hero it's definitely very complicated and you need to be able to be a tusk player to actually get it down and get a lot of value because aghanim scepter at the end of the day is not going to help you get any kind of damage going but it is going to help you set up your team first success because if you're able to kick the carry out of a team fight it's going to be a really big problem for the enemy team and at the same time if you're able to blink onto the high ground and you're able to kick anybody away from their base your team will blow them up quickly and you snowball right into them you're gonna be doing so much work just off that one play you could literally win the game so this is a very high impact type of support you need to be very active early on definitely don't stay in lane soaking up xp the best thing this hero does is rotations think about tusk kind of like a roaming punch this is kind of what this hero does goes to every single side lane and tries to win all of them at the same time and at least help them especially mid lane when there's a mid laner like monkey king or any of these heroes that don't have any mobility spells in the mid lane you're able to tear them apart you're able to kill them so easily because you're able to cut the distance with snowball you have tag team that does a lot of damage especially if you max it and you have ice shards so they can't get away this hero ends up being a really big problem for these mid laners that have the zero mobility spells that can become a really big problem for the enemy mid laner and they will never know when you're coming especially if you're dewarding mid and if you're staying off map they're always going to be worried that there's going to be a tusk rotation and you can always go for items like spirit vessel which are always very nice on a hero like this there's no problem in building urn pretty much this hero can build whatever you guys want but overall i definitely recommend you guys to learn how to play with blank aghanim scepter once you guys see how far you're able to kick people how much value you're able to get you have stun you have a disengage with 
with Snowball, you're able to put your teammates in there and get really, really crazy saves. The best touch players in the world have insane Snowball saves. And with those Snowball saves alone, warrant the first phase or second phase pick for this hero. So you guys definitely need to keep that in mind on how much impact you can actually have in a game when you learn how to play this hero pretty consistently. So do your best on trying to learn this hero first. Practice with them before you go for any of these super high tech plays that are very difficult to pull off consistently. But once you're able to pull these plays consistently, that's what makes Tusk a really nice hero to play. And definitely the skill gap is a little bit higher. It's not an easy hero to get value from. It's not an easy hero to play. It definitely takes quite a bit of skill to play Tusk properly. So I would definitely recommend you guys to put in some time into this hero once you guys realize that he is one of the best supports in Dota. His win rate, like I mentioned, is kind of bad, but I just think that's because players don't understand when to pick this hero, and they definitely don't understand on how to play this hero consistently. And anything can be said about any hero in Dota. You can say that any hero played consistently is a really good hero, but this hero can definitely just do so many things in the support line and does very well against the current meta supports. Let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think about Tusk support. If you guys have been playing him and if there's any Tusk specialists watching this video, what would be your recommendations for any newer players? Leave it down in the comment section below. I hope you guys have been enjoying the videos. You guys have been smashing the likes in the comments. Thank you so much for subscribing. We already passed a thousand subscribers. I'm super, super stoked to keep bringing you guys more videos. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.